jihad, jihad, jihad. Muslims are fundamentalists. Are fundamentalists. Are terrorists. Are terrorists. The top of the charts is regarding the word jihad. In the international media, there is virulent propaganda about Islam. The media, it is bombarding misinformation about Islam. So every Muslim, he should be aware of these questions. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. We start this evening session with the Qirat by Brother Mahmood Sheikh, a student of 8th Standard Islamic International School, Mumbai. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman Oh 
mutakabbir سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم صدق الله العظيم Now, to present the translation of the Kirat, may I call upon Brother Musa Sir Antonio from Australia. If we had sent down this Quran upon a mountain, you would have seen it humbled and crumbling from the fear of Allah. And these examples we present to the people that perhaps they will give it some thought. He is Allah. There is no God but He, the knower of the unseen and all that is witnessed. He is the most gracious, the most merciful. He is Allah, whom there is no other God but He, the sovereign, the pure, the perfection, the bestower of faith the overseer, the exalted in might, the compeller, the superior. Exalted is Allah far above whatever they associate with him. He is Allah, the creator, the originator, the fashioner. To him belong the best names. Whatsoever is in the heavens, and in the earth is exalting him, and he is the exalted in might, the most wise. On behalf of the Islamic Research Foundation, it's my pleasure to welcome our huge audience present here today for this third day of the 10th day International Islamic Conference and Exhibition evening session. Our first speaker, Farik Naik, is the son 
of the illustrious and world-renowned orator on Islam and comparative religion, Dr. Zakir Naik. He is only 15 years of age, born on 10 July 1994. He is a student of Standard 9th of the Islamic International School, Mumbai. Farik has an excellent grasp and memory of what he learns. At 13, he has become a Hafizul Quran, memorizing the glorious Quran, one hour, five days a week, over nine months a year, for three and a half years, while pursuing his regular studies and extracurricular activities at school. He can understand the major part of the Quran in Arabic, as well as converse in Arabic. His fluency in Dawa talks in English, and Hindi or Urdu at his tender age is commendable. Since he was eight years old, while on dawah trips with his father, Farik started giving short talks in English as well as in Arabic. He also recited the Quran during these talks in front of large audiences in thousands in Chennai, Kashmir, Pune, Dubai, Italy, Trinidad and Tobago, Jeddah and other places worldwide. He addressed more than 50,000 people in Srinagar in 2003 when he was merely nine years old. His travels to South Africa, USA, UK, France, Germany, Switzerland, Netherlands, Belgium, Italy, Spain, Trinidad and Tobago, UAE, Saudi Arabia and several cities in India has broadened his experience with different people and places as well as grasping of opportunities for Dawa pragmatically. Brothers and sisters, let's all welcome the brother emerging before all of us to talk on misconceptions about Islam. Let's all welcome Farik Zakir Naik. Brothers and sisters, let's all welcome the brother emerging before all of us to talk on misconceptions about Islam. Let's all welcome Farik Zakir Naik. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, ala rasulillah, wa ala ali wa sabi ajma'in, amma abad. A'uzu billahi minash shaytanir rajim, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Udu'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah, wal maw'izatil hasanah, wajadilhum billatihi ahsan. Rabbish wahli sadri, wa yassirli amri. Wahlul Okodatam Milisani Yafkau Kauli. My respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, be upon all of you. The topic of my talk is misconceptions about Islam. It is the duty of every Muslim to convey the message of Islam to the non-Muslims, to those who are unaware of it. It is compulsory on every Muslim to do da'wah. Da'wah means 
and invitation. And there are various methodologies of conveying the message of Islam. The most common methodology is when a Muslim meets a non-Muslim, he speaks a hundred good points about Islam. Even if the non-Muslim, he agrees with all the hundred good points that have been spoken, yet at the back of his mind, he will have a few negative points. He may say, yeah, I agree what has been spoken, but you are the same Muslim who's a terrorist. Ah, you are the same Muslim who's a fundamentalist. Ah, you are the same people who spread your religion at the point of the sword. You are the people who subjugate the woman. These few negative points at the back of his mind will prevent him from accepting the beauty of Islam. That's the reason when I meet a non-Muslim, what I prefer, I ask him up front, what does he feel is wrong with Islam? With the limited knowledge, whether right or wrong, what does he feel is wrong with Islam? And after he's made comfortable and he is at ease, he poses three or four questions. And there are a set of 20 most common questions asked by non-Muslims regarding Islam. And these three or four questions, they invariably fall in the 20 most common questions. Every Muslim, he should be aware of these 20 most common questions with references from the glorious Quran, authentic hadith, with reason and logic. How do these misconceptions arise in the minds of non-Muslims? Today, in the international media, there is virulent propaganda about Islam. The media, it is bombarding misinformation about Islam. Whether it be the international news channel, whether it be the radio broadcast stations, whether it be the internet, there is virulent propaganda about Islam in the international media. So every Muslim, he should be aware of these 20 most common questions. And wherever you go, these 20 questions, they are the same. There may be one or two additional questions, but the remaining 20 questions, they are the same, wherever you go. Like if you go in the Western countries, there may be an additional question. Why does Islam prohibit the giving and taking of interest? But the remaining 20 questions, they are the same wherever you go. Like how, if you want to appear for an examination, you refer to the guide. In India, you have the Navni 21 most likely questions to appear in the examination. If you want to get favorably good, not excellent, if you want to pass as far as the examination is concerned, you refer to the guide. And you have such books in almost all countries of the world. Similarly, if every Muslim is aware of these 20 most common questions, he will do his fard and he will become a part-time da'i. So every Muslim, they should be aware of these 20 most common questions. As far as today's talk is concerned, I will not be able to cover all the 20 most common questions due to the time limitation. But you can go on our website, www.irf.net, where the answers are given in detail. As for those non-Muslims who go out of the way on anti-Islamic sites and get information against Islam, there are a set of another 20 common questions. So 20 common questions to those non-Muslims who have gone on anti-Islamic sites and have got information against Islam. That we won't be discussing today. Even that is there on our website, www.irf.net. As far as today's talk is concerned, I will, inshallah, cover more than 50% of the 20 most common questions asked by non-Muslims 
regarding Islam. The first number one misconception, the top of the charts is regarding the word jihad. Jihad is not only misunderstood by many of the non-Muslims, but it is even misunderstood by many of the Muslims. Non-Muslims, as well as many of the Muslims, they believe that jihad is any war fought by any Muslim, whether it be for any reason, whether it be for land, whether it be for language, whether it be for color, whether it be for race. Jihad does not mean any war fought by any Muslim, whether it be for land, whether it be for language, whether it be for color. Jihad comes from the Arabic word jahada, which means to strive, which means to struggle. And in Islamic terminology, jihad means to strive and struggle against one's own evil inclination. Jihad also means to strive and struggle where there's oppression. Jihad also means to strive and struggle in self-defense. Jihad also means to strive and struggle in the battlefield. So jihad basically means to strive, to struggle. For example, if a student He's striving and struggling to pass the examination. In Arabic, we would say that he is doing jihad. And many of the non-Muslims, including many of the Muslims, they believe that jihad can only be done by Muslims. There are several verses in the glorious Quran talking about jihad done by non-Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Luqman, chapter number 31, verse number 14. وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَحْنًا عَلَىٰ وَحْنًا وَفِصَالُهُ فِي أَعْمَيْنِ That we have enjoined upon man kindness to his parents. His mother bore him with weakness upon weakness and gave birth to him with weakness. The immediate next verse, Surah Luqman, chapter number 31, verse number 15. وَإِن جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا And if the parents, they strive and struggle to make you worship others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then do not obey them, but yet live with them with love and compassion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats a similar message in Surah An-Kabut, chapter number 29. Verse number 8. وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ حُسْنًا وَإِن جَاهَدَاكَ لِتُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا That you have enjoined upon man kindness to his parents. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about non-Muslim parents who are striving and struggling to make their children worship others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is called jihad fi sabil shaitan. And what we Muslims should do is jihad fi sabil Allah. But normally when the term jihad is used, it is taken for granted that it is jihad fi sabil Allah, unless it is specified. Oh people of the world,